Good evening. Um, yes, so we're going to do some beginner intermediate-ish soldering tonight, which involves SMD parts. So, as you can see here, this is my Cord Mojo, my digital to analog converter. So, yes, um, to start with, we have actually, um, at least right for me, I've attempted to change the capacitors and the resistors here. And, um, but the problem is, these are the, um, how shall I put it? This is the power supply capacitor. These are the power su supply ca capacitors. These are the output capacitors, if I went wrong. Yes, and these six resistors are involved in um, analog reproduction of sound. So today, we are going to attempt to solder this particular actually upgrade this particular resistor of the Cord Mojo. It is the R330 resistor and its resistance would be 0.33 ohms. And yes, um, as you see here, it is um, a resistor related with the um, power supply um, module. So it is a thick film resistor of um, an unknown make, at least to my knowledge. So what we are attempting to do here today is to upgrade it to this, this um, resistor. So this is essentially a mouth resistor and um, yes, it is a thin, a thin film resistor. So the difference between mouth resistors and thin film, like, um, sorry, um, like thin film resistors is that mouth resistors actually are um, we would call them um, tube-like. So the surface area of a, a melt resistor would be a, approximately three times as large as a thin film resistor, which gives it much more stable, like a much more stable performance compared to um, yes, normal thin film resistors. Um, let's begin. So the problem is yes, um, as I've mentioned um, beforehand, this is a relatively beginner intermediate-ish soldering project which is SMD you would want to realize that um, let's put this in comparison this is my finger so you're dealing with really small surface mount um, products um, surface mount resistors in this case so what you would want to do I mean what you would want to do usually is to use one of those clip-like soldering irons where you could clip the two sides and take it out. As I've said before, beginners, intermediate, that's pretty much what you've got, a single soldering iron. So um, yes, make well use of it. So let's begin. Um, what I would recommend you to do, what the plan is, is to create two large soldering bulbs um, two large soldering blobs and then attempt to heat them evenly and then remove it this is the first phase you would want to do so let's without further ado let's start i would recommend you to form two blobs soldering blobs over the component here such that you can evenly heat the bulb, the blobs, and remove it. So let's do this first. You would want to tin your soldering iron with a bit of tin and just give it a quick clean in general. And then you would want to apply solder such that you can form two blobs to the resistor. As you can see, it's definitely a hard task, which requires patience. Bear with me, everyone. As you can see here, currently, um, the PC board is a bit charred, which is a problem on my part. But the main point is, 
you could see that there are bulbs of solder present. Which is a good thing as they act as heat absorbers to help you remove the resistor. So the process of removal is fairly straightforward. As you can see, you just try to, as I said before, attempt to evenly heat both sides such that the temperature would be sufficient for its removal. Well, um, I believe I've left out one step, which I apologize, is to retin your solder and apply some fresh solder on it, as it would facilitate the heat transfer, which is good for your removal of the soldering component. Yes, and it requires certain patience and skill as you would not want to char your boards. Neither would you want to damage the components or the PC board itself. So please, please be very cautious and patient with what you're doing. As you can see, it's definitely not a task for the lighthearted. Almost there. It's gonna take some time this time, as they say in carpenters. It's not one of those days where things go easy. I would apologize for this. Definitely seen easier days than this particular resistor. If in doubt, please, please either stop or add a bit more solder. Either of it would do good. As you can see, it is finally removed. Well, unfortunately, there is some degree of charring, I would say, on the PCB. And yes, as you can see, probably, I have created a little dent there. But that won't be the end of the world. Yes, it will definitely not be the end of the world. Well, um, yes, we can be gracious about that. Yes, um, just saying, if you would want to solve the problem of exposure, the best way to do is to cover it with epoxy, which I would highly recommend. So back to the component itself. This is a MELF resistor, which, bear with me. Um, where was my resistor? Um, yes, let's say that we have lost the resistor. Anyways, this is my finger again for comparison. So, 
If it makes any sense for you, it is a very minuscule component. So let us begin. So what, what I would do here is just, I mean, Yes, as they say, it's not rocket science, but it's not exactly easy, though, to remove its packaging because its packaging was designed to be used on a manufacturing line. So what you would do is just remove the component first. I mean, it's here. So, what I would say is, um, yes, I think I have left out one procedure due to the circumstance that it is actually quite well. So what you would want to do is re-tin your pads. And, of course, you could choose to use a soldering pump to use a soldering pump and take out the solder. You can also choose to use a wire braid, as in the copper braid, sorry. Yep, it's yes, you can choose to use a copper um, a copper desoldering braid and do the exact same thing. Which I would leave to other users. So, as you, as you can see here, it's a really minuscule component that ought to be applied like this. Well, just as they say, a MELF resistor is also infamously called a most end up lying on the floor component. As you can see, it being tube light does not help the cause so what would you do if it's a diy project involving you and yourself only well as experience recalls i would recommend a friend which happens to be the cameraman today paco hi but since you're alone like most of us are I would recommend you apply a huge bulb of solder. Well, it is not the best of works, but certainly what you could manage with mitigating circumstances. Please forgive yourself. You would want to hold it properly in place and melt the solder. Because when everything goes right, bear with me, add a bit, add a tad more solder, which, be generous, yes, be generous, add a tad more solder, and try it again if it doesn't work. Ow, yes, as you can see, most end up lying on the floor. You can see that I have applied one side, as in, I should rephrase that, I have successfully soldered one side. So we, as you can see, it is fixated on where it is. Try not to move it with too much force or else it's just going to break the pads, which is less than, less than optimal. Please leave some space in the next one such that it facilitates solder to be flowing onto the pad. Once it's done properly, you should see the solder being absorbed fairly quickly by the component, which would appear like this which is fairly straightforward. Yet again, please be careful with outlying components as you could char them or at worst case, you could disable them and render them functional as in um, hinder their function and make them useless. 
So, yes, as you see, this is the completed work. It is not, as, as I said before, it is not optimal as this is beginners to intermediate, but is a job, it is a job well done. To prove it works, well, yes, this is fairly, to be fair, this is the most exciting part because it's a 50-50 scenario where everything could go right or everything could go wrong. Here's to its health. I would say that it is a success. Yes. Well, um, thank you for watching and yeah, be enthusiastic, be happy.